Hello learners, this is Top Notch Online TV by Thaddeus Baluka, the Ocean of Chemistry, and this is the Yupa Command Center. This webinar will provide distilled content for high school uh, subjects. And we are starting to reform and make the YouTube channel better and, and more detailed and things can only get bigger and better introducing the best and the biggest education channel for you top notch online tv is here to unmask to unpack unwrap unlock delve deep illuminate and demystify those top those tough high school subjects among them chemistry we do so in a pragmatic manner coupled with paragonism, dash of humor, and magnetism. So with the best and renowned teachers from top, much, top, top schools in Kenya, you are sure to get nothing short of the best. There is no better place to be other than the Top Notch Online TV. Education has never been this easy. We have all the secret to help you pass in your exam. So in our today's uh, lesson, I'm going to start by unpacking and unmasking uh, chemistry. And our topic of interest today is the topic of carbon and its compound. Our subtopic is solvay process, which is the manufacture of sodium carbonate. So work with me as I try to navigate, as I try to break down and simplify this industrial process called the solvay process. Solvay process involves the manufacture of sodium carbonate. We start by looking at, in any industrial process, what are the raw materials? The main raw materials in the solvay process are as follows. As you can be able to see from the screen, we have, we have brine, we also have limestone, we have coke, and remember coke is carbon, and ammonia. So the main raw materials are brine, limestone, <coughs> coke, and ammonia. Let's a look, look at the main reactions that take place in the process or survey process. First of all, you need brine, as you can be able to see from the top. You can be able to look at the screen and you are able to see brine at the top. Then the brine is supplied from the top, and then we have ammonia. This is the main source of ammonia uh, from the bottom part. So when the two come, they'll be able to mix at the ammonia absorber. That's the first step. When the brine and ammonia mix, they form the ammonico brine, which is taken to the solvay tower. It has been shown on the screen. From there, after taking the ammonical brine, it is important to understand that ammonical brine is simply a mixture of brine, of, of brine and ammonia. Or rather, it's simply ammonia, a brine which is concentrated with, with ammonia. So it is simply a mixture. So whatever occurs in the ammonia absorber is simply the mixing up of brine and ammonia. So once now the ammonical brine reaches the solvay tower, we need the other main reagent, which is carbon four oxide. The carbon four oxide is generated from the kill, as being shown on the screen. So here we are having the limestone kill. This limestone kill, we generate carbon four oxide in two ways. That is, as you can be able to see, uh, in the in the in the kill, we are having the calcium carbonate. The calcium carbonate is heated to produce calcium oxide and carbon-4 oxide as shown there. We can also generate carbon-4 oxide by burning carbon in presence of oxygen and then you get carbon-4 oxide. So one now the carbon-4 oxide is generated through those two methodologies that is either by eating calcium carbonate to form calcium oxide and carbon-4 oxide or by burning coke that is carbon in air to form carbon oxide. So the carbon oxide produced in the limestone cane is taken to the solvay tower. And because the gas is supplied from the lower part of the solvay tower, 
and of course we also have water. The water is already there because remember we are having brine. Brine is a solution. So already water is already present. So in that kind of a scenario, we have now our ammonia, we have brine, that is sodium chloride, we have carbon dioxide, and we have water. So the main reaction now occurs in the Solvay Tower. How does that one take place? As you can be able to see from this end, we have two kind of reactions that take place in the Solvay Tower. And those two reactions are the, the one that involve gases. So in the upper part of the Solvay Tower, we have ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water. When those two react, they give us the ammonium hydrogen carbonate. Then we have the ammonium hydrogen carbonate in the lower part of the Solvay Tower. Now we'll react with the remaining component, which is brine, the sodium chloride. So this ammonium hydrogen carbonate react with sodium chloride, that is brine, to form ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. When the two are formed, the ammonium chloride is very soluble, while sodium hydrogen carbonate is less soluble at that particular temperature of the solvent tower. So in that kind of a scenario, when we have, as you can be able to see from this end, as you can be able to see, that the ammonium chloride here is aqueous, so meaning it's soluble at that particular temperature of the solvent, and then the sodium hydrogen carbonate is insoluble. So to, to, to separate the two components, remember the main product that we require here, the main product that we require here is sodium carbonate. So we have to separate the ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. So we can filter. Once we filter, you are going to get sodium hydrogen carbonate as a residue and ammonium chloride as the filtrate. So the sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is the residue, is taken to the roster. And as you can be able to see, at the roster, the sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposes to sodium carbonate plus water plus carbon oxide. So we have now got our main product. We have now got our main product, which is the sodium carbonate, as shown on the screen. That's our main, our main product that we require. The sodium carbonate, the, so, the, the, the carbon four oxide and water are recycled back to the Solvay Tower. Because as you know, and as you have seen in the main reaction that these two are also required. That's very much important for you to be able to understand. Then the, we have the ammonium chloride. The ammonium chloride is taken back to the ammonia generator. And the ammonia generator, the, 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 we have taken the ammonium chloride to the ammonia generator, this chamber that is being shown on the screen. The chamber that is being shown on the screen. Now, the calcium oxide that was found in the limestone kiln, it is selected with water. To select is to add water. So when you add some water, you select the calcium oxide to get calcium hydroxide, as shown there. The calcium hydroxide is taken to the ammonia generator. So at the ammonia generator, the ammonia, the, the calcium hydroxide will react with ammonium chloride, which is obtained the filtrate uh, from the Solvay tower. And as you can be able to see from this end, we are going to have the ammonium chloride reacting with the calcium hydroxide to form calcium chloride plus ammonia plus water. So the ammonia that is formed in the ammonia generator, the ammonia that is formed in the ammonia generator is recycled back and taken back to the ammonia absorber, that is the first chamber, whereby it mixes with brine to form ammonia brine. Then the, the water can also be recycled. Then the main product that is formed here is calcium chloride. The main product formed here is calcium chloride. And it has several uses. It can be used as in extraction of sodium metal. 
whereby it is added to sodium to lower its, 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 its melting point. It is also used as a drying agent uh, for many gases in the laboratory. Okay, in that kind of a scenario, I also want to repeat a very important point that the main reactions occur in the survey tower because that is where now where we are producing, that is whereby we are producing the sodium carbonate. And how does that one take place? We have said that, and I repeat that, we have two main reactions. There's the reaction that occurs in the upper part of the sulfide tower. And as shown on the screen, we are having ammonia reacting with carbon dioxide and water to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate. At the lower, the lower part of the sulfide tower, we are having this ammonium hydrogen carbonate reacting with sodium chloride to form ammonium chloride plus sodium hydrogen carbonate. The two can be separated using filtration because sodium hydrogen carbonate is less soluble while ammonium chloride is very soluble at that particular temperature. They can also be separated using the fractional crystallization because they have different solubilities. Also, in, when you are told to write the equation that takes place in the solvate tower, just you can also write the overall reaction as shown on the screen, whereby you just combine the, the, the reactant there. We are having the sodium chloride, we are having ammonia, we are having water, we have carbon four oxide to form ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. We also have the reaction the slaker, whereby we are said after now the calcium carbonate decomposes to form uh, carbon oxide and calcium oxide. The calcium oxide is mixed with water to form calcium hydroxide, which is used to make ammonia. Uh, a student will be asked a question like now, what are the, the role of the baffles? You can see there are baffles in the solvent tower, as you can be able to see. Also, some baffles can also be put in the, absorbent, in the, in the ammonia absorber. The role of the bubbles are very simple. They allow the liquid to trickle down slowly for proper mixing, for proper mixing with the gases. So the purpose of the baffles is to allow the liquid to trickle down slowly for proper mixing with rather to allow for more time to mix uh, with, the, with the gases. Another question that is very much important, you can be asked like, um, uh, you can also be asked why these, uh, why water is allowed to circulate within the solvent tower? Because the reaction in the solvent tower is highly exothermic, so water is used as a coolant, and that is why this process, the solvent process, should be located near a river, because water is needed as a coolant, and also water is a reactant. Another question that you can also be asked here is, what are the uses of sodium carbonate? And sodium carbonate is used in manufacture of glass, is used in manufacture of paper, manufacture of detergents. You can also be asked uh, a question like now, explain or rather give two, uh, two, 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 uh, sub that are two substances that are recycled in this process. And uh, the two substances that are recycled here, we have ammonia and we have carbon fog that. Also, we have water. You can also be asked another question like, why we cannot prepare sodium carbonate using this process? And the reason is that if you have to prepare sodium carbonate, it will be potassium carbonate. It will be very difficult because the potassium hydrogen carbonate has almost the same solubility as ammonium chloride, and therefore will be very difficult to separate the two components. That is very much important for you to be able to understand. Remember, this survey process should be located near other process so that the other process can provide the ammonia. When you're to ask those kind of questions, look at now, is there any raw material there that is produced by another process? Yes, the other process. So the other process can be located near the sulfate plant to provide the ammonia that is used in this process. That is very much important for you to understand. You can also be asked to give two uses of uh, calcium chloride that is also formed there. And you find that now the calcium chloride can be used uh, in, in extraction of sodium metal and also be used as a drying agent for gases in the laboratory. And also it is also important 
uh, to note that, as I said, again, that the sodium hydrocarbon has also uses. It can also be used in manufacture of the chapa madazi baking powder. It's used to make the baking soda made out of sodium hydrocarbonate. And a student will be asked a question like this. Why is it that when you're cooking madazi using baking powder, the dough rises when you put it in a frying pan? That is application of chemistry. So the rationale and the explanation here is the student must know what are the components of the baking soda? The baking, the component of the baking powder is sodium hydrogen carbonate. So when you are cooking madad with baking powder, the moment you place the, the duff in a frying pan, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, once it is decomposed to form sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus what is shown here. So the carbon dioxide is the one that makes the duff to rise. So that's why the mandaz will always have a crack as the carbon fog that was escaping it had to find a way out and we have come to the end of our beautiful uh, lesson today about the extraction of survey till next time bye bye